sup, Goth Gamer Nation? <laughs> um, I know it's not like regular demo hours, uh, but I felt like making some low commitment content. I want to show up, I want to game, then fucking dip. Anyway, I took a look at this third person survival horror project called Despair Blood Curse from one man development team Crimson Sequence, in large part because the protagonist looks a lot like Rain, or as I like to call her, Blood Rain. I, I couldn't tell you the first thing about the plot. Uh, I, I guess it takes place in a mansion in the early 1900s and you're a demon hunter of sorts named Anna who returns here to rescue her sister Catherine after receiving a letter that seemed to imply she was in danger. I don't know if this is the kind of thing where you plot out an elaborate backstory or it's just something you dream up along the way as a excuse for some neat retro-ish gameplay. There's a lot about this demo that reads to me as a decision made because it was neat and not so much trying to be cohesive or historically accurate, which is fine, I appreciate that. Always willing to accept cool over correct. I guess. So for the most part, what you're going to be doing is poking around this lavish home full of monsters to fight, solving item-based puzzles, and groping around in the dark with a lantern. In some part, I think I fully expected this to be a janky disaster asset flip, and to my surprise, it's a very solid slice of a game idea here. It's certainly a little raw and wonky with plenty of things that could be ironed out over lots of time in the oven, but it's got a pretty well-defined atmosphere as is. I like the flickering and clinking lanterns that that line the hallways, and the way you can hear enemies shifting around behind doors. The lighting is really interesting, it's sort of hazy. I feel like even when a room is well lit, there is this gauzy fog to it all. And when it's truly dark, it is pitch black, with your lantern only providing a pathetic arc of light around you. This makes any time spent in the dark really tense. There's something reassuring to me with its setting, because now I don't know what he's got planned for the rest of the game, but one of my biggest issues with Resident Evil games, and other survival horror games is that they usually start out in a cool location, a place I would like to explore in real life. I love to just be let loose in a big house that ain't mine, go through people's drawers, try on their clothes, pretend like I'm a functioning adult. But then what happens? We always end up in a sterile white sci-fi laboratory and that part usually bums me out. The closest thing to that we see is this weird industrial generator room which is fine, that's neat, I'd like to go there. We're still working with tactile old-timey shit, like big old levers and uh, other shit. There are obvious cues taken from classic survival horror games, as well as some nods to modern day ones. The inventory quick menu seems like something right out of the recent Resident Evil remakes. Obviously, the camera follows you and you can move around while aiming, but it also keeps other staples like a chill save room and chests to store your non-essential items. I don't know how they're planned to be used going forward, but during the demo, you're only given four chances to save. So maybe that will be an item you pick up or just a limit for a, that particular save point. There is appropriately sparse supplies given to you and some semblance of damage modification depending on where you hit a creature. I fought this big dude a few times until I realized that it mattered where I shot him. I think my biggest complaint with it is something that I don't know if one person is able to substantially overhaul, but I do think animation is really inconsistent. There are things that look great, like the way, I don't know what they are, the, the sexy tube worm head ladies run in that mad floppy dash. That looks spooky. I learned pretty late that it's probably better to just run away from an enemy and shoot back at them instead of resorting to the melee because it is less effective and it looks very awkward. You, you get caught in this kind of comical back and forth bonking until your enemy just kind of lazily ragdolls away. The same could be said for Anna who just kind of falls over dead-eyed. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I guess that's what I'd do too. <laughs> Just falling down? A mood? From what I can tell through his interactions on the Steam community, this is not a priority to him and that's understandable, especially this early into development. But I do think having certain incidental animations, even if it's something like picking up a document to read, goes a long way in making a game feel polished for me, even more so than having pretty assets, which this game does have. Even mentioning things like this is something I, I loathe to do, because just the fact that this much of it was willed into existence without the aid of some big publisher is an achievement in itself, I feel. And it looks like there is a solid vision for it. I see we like many of the same things 
things and I want to see this made and I want to see it do well. There's a lot of indie projects like this that aspire to honor older survival horror games, but sort of cave to including one too many modern accessibility things and from what I can see this one, it's on the right track. There is promise here, and I don't mean to say that it is slavishly trying to mimic older games. They've inserted their own personality and little bits of creativity into it, what with your odd, ornately decorated turn-of-the-century arsenal. And the it may be one notch too horny enemies, but it's got a vibe. Clear! Oh, hey, dude. How about some of this? And a little bit of this. And... If I am only allotted one suggestion, I find it more important to address that there is a startling lack of rats in this game. I mean, we're in plague times, deeply unsanitary times, and we even go into this cellar that leads down to like a sewer dungeon. I didn't hear one rat. I don't know why I'm trying to justify their presence with logic and history. They should be there no matter where it's set. Yeah, so anyway, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs>